Good afternoon. Thank you for having us to your home in Cantanning today. Well, thank you for coming. <laughs> I'm here today with John McHugh, who served as a representative from Armstrong County between the years 1963 and 1964, and again in 1971 through 1976. I wanted to begin by asking you about your childhood and your family life and how they prepared you for, for public office. Well, uh, I had a grandfather who was always telling me about good things that I could <clears throat> go to the uh, go to uh, whatever there was to Harrisburg or to Washington and so on. And he'd tell me all these stories. He'd uh, <clears throat> tell me some of the old Irish stories and some of the Irish songs. Mm -hmm. And d did you? Um... Did you always have political aspirations? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I decided I wanted to be a president back when I was five years old or something like that. Would you say your family was political? Not necessarily. I think the, the grandfather just was doing that to keep me busy. Okay. Um, how did you decide to become a Republican? Well, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, I didn't like it that the uh, president at that time uh, put us into war, <clears throat> and I thought, well, that's not the right thing to do. I'll go in for the Republicans, but it ended up <laughs> I was going anyway. Okay, and which president was that? Roosevelt. Roosevelt, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and of course he was a wonderful leader on that, you know. So you've been a Republican pretty much all your life then? Yes. Mm -hmm. But I've argued with Republicans as well as Democrats, and I have a lot of friends who are Democrats. Could you tell me a little bit about your educational background and uh, your career before coming to the Pennsylvania House? Okay, well, I grew up in Ford City, went to uh, <clears throat> St. Mary's uh, Catholic Church, uh, uh, church and uh, eight, eight uh, months of, uh, in their local one, then I went to the public high school and I got mixed up in some politics there, and that was a lot of fun. And I studied about history and various other things like that. And then uh, I went to uh, the, the Penn State. At that time, it was only Penn State. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I was involved in politics there. Uh, they have uh, the students to get their places and go through a regular, it was a regular uh, one. Uh, so I enjoyed that. And, uh, and I was also involved in uh, all various uh, items that they would have, like uh, different uh, <coughs> uh, outfits I belonged to and we'd have our parties. And, I was a uh, <clears throat> in the victory in in the uh, 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 one. Uh, what am I talking about? The, the where you make speeches and the back and forth. The debate. The debates. Yes, yeah, so I was a debater, and they don't do that anymore. But uh, we uh, enjoyed that, and I I learned an awful lot about doing all of these things. Well, it certainly prepared you for law, the law school, too, with debating. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. And where did you go to law school? The University of Pittsburgh. Um, I was, I graduated from Penn State uh, in uh, 1942, and that was a year earlier than what I should have, but they gave us extra times, and so... Uh, in the, I joined the National, I joined the uh, Air Corps, uh, <clears throat> but they couldn't take us in for about another seven or eight months. So I finished at uh, Penn State, and then I had, uh, I, at uh, Pittsburgh, one complete uh, section. Mm -hmm. And then after that, then they called me, and uh, I came back several years later. Uh, so when I was in the uh, Air Corps, <clears throat> I wanted to be a pilot, <laughs> but uh, 
I didn't make out on that, and same with others. So then they made me a, a, a private, <laughs> and uh, which turned out to be all right. I joined this crew. And, uh, I was in the ball turret underneath, which was an important part of it, as well as the other parts of it. And we went through uh, <clears throat> a lot of uh, uh, places where we were fired upon. We saw a lot of other planes go down. Fortunately, our plane was not hurt. There'd be some uh, things going through the the the, the William the the bird the the thing itself, but it didn't cause anything. We'd always get back. So that was a very fortunate thing. So then when I uh, was discharged, <clears throat> I signed up again for the uh, Air Corps. And then I went into uh, back to uh, Pittsburgh. And I went down there so I could try to get a commission. <laughs> uh, I took ROTC there, and I did get a commission. And I was in the various things like that. Then I came home to Fort City and got there. <clears throat> and then when uh, we were called to active duty again in 1950, uh, we uh, <clears throat> uh, sent me up to the uh, place in uh, Erie that, where I was on the staff of the... Uh, of the brigade. So I did that for a while, and then all of a sudden, they asked me, do you want to go to a law school? <laughs> I said, yes. And we went down to Washington, D.C., and we had, had that, and I became that. So from then on, I was uh, on the uh, staff of uh, the uh, National Guard uh, for all those years. <laughs> and, and I went from uh, the lowest one up until I became uh, uh, the, the head of it. Uh, uh, and uh, then <clears throat> also uh, uh, I was given an honorary uh, <clears throat> of uh, being uh, a, a, a general, which there was no money on it, but it was certainly nice that I had all of these different jobs from Buck Private all the way up to uh, the National Guard uh, headquarters. And that was the end of me, but I've enjoyed it. Let's have some of these photos <laughs> behind you. Do you remember what the type of plane was that you were on in World War II? B-17. It was a wonderful plane. Uh, it would have four engines, and uh, sometimes they'd be knocked out one or two, but usually the plane could keep going on fewer engines, but they couldn't get more altitude. If, they, if it was close enough to England and they had enough time that they could uh, get there, they could at least save themselves and get out. So it was it was lucky, and, and we were lucky, because <laughs> uh, we saw a lot of <clears throat> planes go down. Mm -hmm. We'd uh, count the uh, <clears throat> the guys jumping out. Hopefully they'd make it, and if we didn't see them at all, <laughs> yeah. we didn't. <laughs> so when did you retire from the from the uh, National Guard? <clears throat> uh, well, uh, the National Guard. I was finally made a. A, a full colonel, and they uh, got me in the, the one out at uh, uh, <clears throat> in the, uh, near near Washington, uh, and I was <clears throat> let's see by uh, what's what's the head of uh, of uh, up from there, why can't I say all these things? Uh, yeah, but I was uh, around uh, around uh, Baltimore was where the big uh, one was. So I was in there for pardon, the not the Pentagon. It was the the head of the that particular one. 
and so I was there for a while, about two years, and then I was retired. <laughs> then I became a, uh, a uh, like I said, uh, uh, like the brigadier general. Brigadier general, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And I would uh, come back home, and they'd call me to make speeches and <laughs> to watch the parades. And, so I was very pleased with that. And you were very much involved in veterans' issues whenever you came to the House of Representatives, too. Yes, that was one of the things that we did, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have a picture, I think, of um, one of your bill signings, too. And that yes. This was one that um, our, uh, <coughs> our um, one in, in, the, uh, uh, in the outfit that uh, <coughs> We wanted to improve the section of the National Guard, uh, what we had to do. So on here, we're showing Governor Schaefer signing it. And I was uh, a member of uh, that. I was in the uh, National Guard and in the, uh, <laughs> in, in the House at that time. Now then, the other gentleman is uh, <coughs> Stanley Root, who was active in the National Guard. Uh, he was not a member of it, but he was one of the signers uh, of this. And then the gentleman in the back was uh, Mr. Uh, uh, let's see what it is, Schaefer. Uh, and, uh, Snyder? Snyder, yeah. And... <coughs> So he was very pleased that that came. He was in charge of uh, the National Guard there. So it works so well, we haven't had any problems. <laughs> was there any overlapping with your military time and your time in the Pennsylvania House? No, they worked very well together. <laughs> uh, when I was uh, stationed at uh, Harrisburg, and I had to be down there in Harrisburg <laughs> so I could uh, get together, you know. So I never missed one or the other. So how did you become involved in politics in general? I guess my grandfather told me I was going to be a president someday. <laughs> so what, ma what made you decide to run for the Pennsylvania House? Well, I always wanted to, to do that. And uh, uh, I would follow that. And I <clears throat> enjoyed that. And you, you probably would have asked me, uh, how did how did we do that? The first time that I ran, it was the first time that uh, <clears throat> the two uh, persons who were going there did it uh, together. Uh, so that was uh, uh, <clears throat> of. Um, um, Is that when you ran with Stu Helm? Mr. Stuart Stuart Helm, yeah. And he was the Speaker of the House. Well, that's he, quite an honor, huh? It was. And he and I were the two who were running for that office uh, right here in Armstrong County. And that was the last time that they had the, the two running together. After that, they uh, divided them in, in individual districts. Yeah. So the next time, <clears throat> I was given the northern part of Armstrong County. And I got to know everybody. And then the, the next time, I was given the southern part. But it overlapped. It. I didn't have to move from Catani. That's nice. But, and there were people that I knew there, too. And so I enjoyed that. And of course, now then, it uh, doesn't work like that. And we have something like five or six different <laughs> ones there. And we, we don't know. But I, I thought that we had a, a good chance in working for our citizens if we uh, worked for the whole place. So you had a really good relationship with Stuart Helm then? Yes. Uh, he, <clears throat> when I was running, he took me, put, my, put his arm around my shoulder, <laughs> and we went from house to house. And that was a big help because everybody knew Stu, and uh, so they were very kind to me from for years on. Do you remember who you ran against in your first election? 
No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Peter. 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 Caleri. Caleri, yes. And he, he was a good friend. But <laughs> we, we were good friends all our lives. <laughs> yeah. um, do you remember anything else about your other campaign runs? Did you enjoy campaigning? Yes. Uh, I liked the idea of uh, going from door to door, telling the people who I was, and probably some of them knew. Uh, but it was so nice just to feel that they were glad to see somebody, and especially in the rural areas <laughs> where they wouldn't see people, but just uh, the trouble is when I get in, it was hard to get out. <laughs> well, don't be in a hurry to go. At least have a cup of coffee. <laughs> And that, was, that, was, that was nice. So I had a, a lot of good friends that way. Since you were an attorney already, um, did you have name recognition? What, what do you mean name recognition? Did people know you by name? Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to say, just by going to their house, maybe they would come down and look at me in my office. Not necessarily, but uh, I got to know a lot, a lot of people on that deal. Did your law office ever serve as a district office? since during this time I know that there weren't any district offices. Uh, what do you mean as a district office? Um, a place for people to, to actually come and maybe have problems with their pen dot or things well, like that. Well, that's right. Uh, there, because there weren't any other uh, separate things. If I wanted people to come, <laughs> they just they come into my office. <laughs> It was a lot uh, better later when they, they did have that because uh, uh, I'd have the office full of people wanting things and they didn't want me as an attorney, they wanted me to help them in Harrisburg. Mm -hmm. As a legislator, huh? <laughs> but I, I was proud that they, they did. But, uh, it's, it's changed quite a bit now. Um, did your family get involved in politics? Uh, your immediate family. Did your did no. your wife help? No. Well, they, when I ran for something, they they all helped. They go door to door with me at times, mm -hmm. but uh, no, they were they were not in, involved themselves. Okay. In your own words, can you tell me a little bit about the area in which you served? Um, what do you mean for the? Can you tell me a little bit about Armstrong? Oh, by Armstrong <laughs> County. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, was the, the entire uh, county was um, for the two uh, representatives. We'd have the, the entire amount from way up in the north, that uh, <coughs> the little pin that goes up there, and all the way down into uh, the end of you know, where the river runs dry. <laughs> and we. Uh, uh, I made made a lot of friends, mm -hmm. and I, what is even yet? <laughs> I'm working on the street. Somebody yells to me, "Hey, John! <laughs> hey, McHugh!" <laughs> and uh, even if I can't remember all of their names, I remembered who they were and mm -hmm. so on. Yeah, and that that went on for all those years, even to, even to now. <laughs> Would you say Armstrong County is a Republican? Uh, county, or is it more democratic? Well, it could be either way. <laughs> um, uh, most of the time, it was uh, Republican was for the for uh, the, uh, the things that we had down in uh, Harrisburg, mm -hmm. but not always. And, uh, and it was pretty even. And, and the <clears throat> the persons who were running as candidates. We got along pretty well together too, mm -hmm. which was nice. <laughs> so everybody knew each other, and, yeah. and, it, and it was a cordial relationship. Yeah. Good. Um, would you call your your seat a swing district? Would you call, meaning, did it go back and forth between the candidates? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it, it's nobody had a, a, a right to anything, but there's times when one could do a little better job than the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, did the national politics ever affect you as a candidate? Well, <clears throat> no, I would have my own uh, feelings on that, but I didn't have anything to do with whether they were 
elected or not elected. I wasn't sure if the Johnson landslide had anything to do with perhaps you leaving office in 64. No, uh, I, I, I wouldn't say that. Okay. No, it's just that we had a, a fight on and uh, that one uh, I uh, lost out. And I always looked at that as uh, something that was uh, very good for me because then I could go back to my uh, law office. And uh, considering that I was in the mid 50s, I, had I been reelected at that time and stayed on for a while, I probably would not have had uh, a business as being an attorney. How long were you an attorney? Uh, at uh, 57 years. And you just retired this year. Yeah. <laughs> um, can you tell me how you were able to reach your constituents? Well, uh, I'd go door to door when I'm uh, campaigning. And that seemed to be one of the best things because the people were so glad that you'd come to see them. Yeah. <laughs> they'd say, come on in and yeah. have a cup of coffee. Yeah. No, I have to keep going. <laughs> Had a lot of houses to hit, huh? And then uh, when I'd see them on the street, they'd say, Hi, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, so I had a lot of friends, no matter what party they belonged to, and I didn't ask them, were you a Republican or a Democrat? Mm -hmm. I just said, I would like you to do it for me. Well, I don't know whether they did or not, but most of the time I, I was successful. I, I lost the last time in that uh, someone had uh, came in with uh, uh, a type of a one that they put their name on there so that in the right Republican uh, there were two candidates running for it. So that what that did for me, it, sp it split up that so that the Democrat candidate had the more votes. And that's just the way it was. Uh, I didn't very well like that at the time, but as I say, maybe it was a good thing for me just mm -hmm. to retire. Mm -hmm. Whenever you came to the house, do you feel like anyone mentored you? Perhaps maybe Stu Helm? Well, Mr. Helm, of course, was uh, the local. We, we were neighbors here, and uh, I'd known him for a lot of years when I was just a, a young fellow, and he was running his gas station, <laughs> yeah, and uh, so uh, that's the way that was, and I thought that was all right. Um, did you ever sh share a drive back and forth to Harrisburg with anybody? Yeah, from time to time, uh, uh, Senator Peckin um, would often uh, offer a, a ride on there, but for the most part, I think almost everybody wanted his own car so he could come and go as, as he, he wanted. But then others, well, maybe we'd get together and go there and back, which was all right too. Because I was thinking it was a pretty long drive out here this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I, I wasn't sure if you broke up the time with any um, conversation with other people going oh, back. Oh, yes. It's <laughs> a wonderful one. Some of the, some of the dumb jokes. That and uh, I had to do the same thing for National Guard in, in Harrisburg. So even when I wasn't uh, running for office, uh, we'd have about uh, two or three working together and then everybody would have some sort of a joke and <laughs> it would keep up. Yeah. Keep you busy going back and forth. Um, since it is so far away from, um, from Catanning to um, Harrisburg, did you st spend the week whenever you were in session in Harrisburg? No, because I tried to, <coughs> I did uh, do the work down there, do the work in my office. Uh, the work in the office is taking care of people who have something for the military, for the, uh, for the Harris, for the, for the, uh, what do you call them? The, the things that I was, uh, elected to. Mm -hmm. And then other people would come in and want me to do some legal work. <laughs> and uh, then I'd have to go to the courthouse and look up things and 
<coughs> so I, uh, pretty, uh, I try to do that on Thursday and Friday, and uh, then I try to listen to some people on Saturdays and Sundays. So it was a full-time job. <laughs> then on, on Monday, uh, <coughs> we had to be there at 1 o'clock. Uh, so what I do, I get into my office around 7, and go up to the courthouse and look up the things that I needed. And then about 9 o'clock, 9.30, I'd get back to the office and we'd get that typed out. And then the, finally I would have to leave about 10 o'clock because I was going to drive to the airport and to uh, be there when they take off at 12 o'clock. And then that's a half hour to Harrisburg. So then I get off the plane at 12.30 and my son Michael, who worked for the house, would be down to meet me in his car, <laughs> drive me, and I'd be there at 1 o'clock for the, <laughs> for the count. I didn't realize that you took an airplane. That's, that must have been very handy then. Yeah, well, at that time there was, the airplanes were more, it was uh, the one that they used to have all over Pennsylvania. It's yeah. not as good now as it was then. Well, that's, that's great. <laughs> um, do you still keep in touch with any of your old friends from the house? Well, not directly, but when I see them, I do. There's ones that are good friends and, uh, from other towns and as, as well as this, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you remember who some of those guys were? Yeah, you... why can't I just say it? <laughs> oh, no, that's fine, that's uh, fine. There's this one uh, fellow who was in, from Pittsburgh, he was also a lawyer, and we'd uh, work together and then we'd uh, come back and forth, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, how do you feel about your son Michael working at the house? Well, I was glad that he was able to find a job. Uh, it, it was uh, odd the way he did. Uh, all the time that I was in there, he was very much interested in uh, politics and so on. So when he uh, graduated from high school, <coughs> he uh, said he wanted to go down and look at me. So for the next uh, weekend, I said, well, come on down, see what you do. So uh, he did, and he went down on the floor with me and wondered about <coughs> these fellows passing out papers on him. So he went down and said, can I help you pass out these papers? <laughs> and he did. So this went on <coughs> for several days, <laughs> maybe a week. And <coughs> so someone would say, who's that? kid down there putting those papers around. Oh, that's uh, Mike McHugh. <laughs> so then they put him on the payroll. So he started off as a page. Yeah, but it was uh, on his own. Nobody told him. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, he, uh, he stayed down there and he had different uh, jobs. And, but he's been there for all those years. Yeah, he's, he's still employed there. Yeah. Is there anything that um, surprised you whenever you first came to Harrisburg about the Capitol building or the process of uh, in which laws were made? Uh, what do you mean uh, on the, um, how, how, I like the, uh, the... I'm just thinking about the house floor itself. I, I always think... You mean the people or the, or the building? The, um, a little bit of both. Yeah. Because I, I know um, different people have uh, called the house floor a cattle or a livestock <laughs> auction. And, uh, you know, I think uh, before you actually watch it on PCN, I think people think it's very orderly. And they don't realize what everything that goes on there. No, I, I do have to go back <laughs> on some things there. When I was so oh, 10 years old, <laughs> my parents uh, uh, were on the, my father's vacation. <clears throat> so we went through uh, Harrisburg and we went to that, went up to the Capitol, which I thought was just absolutely wonderful. Well, then we kept on going up through New York State and uh, into New England, and we'd stop at every, uh, what do you call it, like, a, like we have, uh, where they would have their people working for them. 
<laughs> so I'd try to meet somebody who was the head of <laughs> each one. And I would just uh, had my picture taken with a couple of them up in uh, Maine <laughs> and Massachusetts and, and, uh, and so on. And I was 10 years old. <laughs> so I decided, well, I wanted to do that. <laughs> You wanted to be a legislator then, huh? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that funny? It is. I forgot yeah. that I would even say that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so what did you think about the, being on the House floor and watching it all happen? Did you think it was organized, chaotic? Well, it has to be chaotic. Uh, each person there is representing somebody from his home district or another district <laughs> or whatever mm -hmm. and uh, so sometimes everybody gets agrees and but it's mm -hmm. pretty hard that everybody can agree mm -hmm. and uh, it, it just it goes like that and sometimes it's longer than others yeah whenever we were reading some of your um de your debates on the house floor we noticed that you were very vocal about rural issues mm -hmm. and uh, probably against maybe some of the um the city people, um, maybe Philadelphia or, or uh, Pittsburgh. So um, I guess rural issues was something that you felt strong about. Oh yeah, I did. Uh, the way they would do that, <laughs> if, if these Philadelphians or Pittsburghers are here, uh, Philadelphia usually would <clears throat> say, well, we need so much money to do this or that, the schools or what. Well, and if they didn't have enough to do it, then they'd go to uh, Allegheny County and they'd say well now if we do that you'll get so much money and you can do that and often it stops there sometimes they'd have to go to some other place and that's just the way it was so uh, as a result uh, areas like this didn't come in with the same thing. Mm -hmm. Were you um, helpful in getting um, Route 28 through this area expanded? Well uh, I yeah, uh, I was in favor of it, and uh, I, I worked on that. But uh, and then I also worked on uh, some of the uh, items of what you have to do when you're driving a car. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so we were so pleased when we got the real uh, uh, what you, what, the one going down the, the river. Now it's a lot better than. Okay. You had to come on the old one just for mm -hmm. about a, what, a half a mile. Yeah. And if you kept on going, you'd go up and down and around. Uh, I had an illegal office, not only in Catanning, but also in um, uh, Freeport. <clears throat> and uh, so often I'd be going down at night or coming back, going around, and I got to know every place where there's water and ice on it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so uh, I was so glad when they, when they got this uh, other thing. And it's, it's still one of the best around here. We have good uh, places, but we don't have the good uh, people building. Uh, but uh, we, we keep hoping maybe things will come along. <laughs> Uh, let's see, what else were you going to do? Um, uh, when did they? Um, I'm just trying to think. Um, you were involved in, um, uh, you were on the board of directors at IUP as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, were you instrumental in getting the campus here in Catanning? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> we had about seven people who started that, and one of them was uh, Senator Peckin, and, and there were other people that. Uh, I, I can't just, okay. uh, and uh, <clears throat> so we, we got the thing going, uh, and uh, you know, my, my, my friend uh, uh, Simmons, uh, and, and so we <laughs> made a deal to buy from the uh, people who were in there, the uh, uh, <clears throat> So on, and so we uh, agreed to pay a certain amount, <laughs> but we didn't have any money. <laughs> uh, so uh, 
my friend Jim called me one time and says, well, <laughs> uh, Jack, uh, I've got the money. We can do it. I said, well, how did you do it? He said, well, his father had died and he took his share of the, uh, what his father left to get it going, but with the idea that he would get reimbursed for that, which happened and we, we got the students coming in and what that was for was to have here in Catani, the everything of the four years that they had in Indiana. <clears throat> and uh, that they would uh, could stay here in Catani and keep going. And we have quite a few older ones who were attorneys and various things. Well, then as time went on, the people in Indiana kept cutting off different things so that uh, it was almost that it wasn't any good. And so it was a lot better when they did move down to uh, the, below the river here. <laughs> and so I was the last one left of that seven. <laughs> uh, they, they all had died except the, the one who was uh, the uh, minister. And, uh, and he had to retire and go back to his hometown. As far as I know, he may still be living, but he was a very nice person. But we were the last of, of the people, although we did have other ones coming in. And we uh, kept it going, but it wasn't so good with the relationship that we had with the uh, people over there. Not that there's anything wrong with what they're doing, but they were keeping us from having these same things. The first uh, couple of years, the kids could be living right here in Catanning, walking up to that school and doing whatever they had to do. And at the end of four years, they could get a, a commission. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I hope that it works a lot better now down uh, below here. But I was uh, on there for, oh, something like 35 or 40 years or something. But I was the last of the originals, and I, I did wait long enough to become the president. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to ask you, can you recall um, what committees you were on? And, um, in, in the legislature? In the legislature, yes. Well, I was on the <clears throat> ones for bears. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the uh, ones were the attorneys uh, judiciary uh, on that and uh, uh, on the military. Okay. Were you vice chairman too of, of military and veterans affairs? Yeah, I think at one your, time I was in your freshman even, term. I think. Yeah, and then later on I was the the head of it. Yeah. And, uh, Do you remember how you got to become cha vice chairman in your freshman term? I suppose Mr. Stewart. <laughs> I was guessing maybe Mr. Helm had a part in that. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty impressive to be a vice chairman in your freshman term. <laughs> um, what do you think of, uh, well, especially since your son Michael is uh, the sound man, what do you think of some of these technological advances that are going on in the house now? Could you imagine operating a laptop from your on the house floor? No, I couldn't. <laughs> I, I have to tell you about that. Maybe you meant to ask me. Um, everybody had his, uh, his desk right in front. And uh, <clears throat> so whatever you had, you opened the, the door and put it in there. And when it got too crowded, you just threw it away. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, every so often, we'd have to write letters to our constituents. Well, uh, later on, you, each one would have a secretary to do it. So when I went down there, uh, they had <clears throat> several secretaries. <laughs> so that was downstairs in the main door. And um, so if you wanted your uh, letter written, you'd get in line. And there'd be any number in mm -hmm. front of you, and you'd have to wait until you returned. And then uh, we'd tell whoever this nice lady was, and they were good. We needed these and so on. 
So <clears throat> when they would be prepared, and uh, they'd be send them up <clears throat> to my uh, desk in the office in the uh, main place, <laughs> and, uh, and we'd mail them off. And that's the way we got around. So it wasn't exactly zing, zing, zing. <laughs> yeah. So whenever you started, you did have a di you did have a, a an office, or did you just have your desk on the house? The desk in the house. That was my office. <laughs> wow. So uh, did you have a locker? Is that where you put your your coat and your hat? Oh yeah, they were there. Uh, mm -hmm. They were they were great things. But they, you you put your coat in there. You didn't have to lock it unless you wanted to. <laughs> okay. Um, what if you needed to make a phone call back home? Did you have to, was that one common phone too? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to find a phone. <laughs> so there, there was no, uh, I mean, not like today, huh? No. Where you could just go to your office and make a phone. Well, then uh, later on, the, the next time, uh, we would have our own offices in the a floor, up, up to the floor, or down the floor. It would be full of other people. Mm-hmm. So that at least was, was some help. And uh, I understand now each member has a complete thing to himself. <laughs> yeah. Do you recall who you shared your office with um, and then in the second time around? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, <laughs> why can't I say the name? Oh, that's okay. <laughs> uh, he, he was, uh, his father had been there and he had been there. Roy Wilt? Yeah, how did you know? Well, we we had talked to Mr. Wilt. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we shared the same office, and so we were were good friends there. Good. Um, so, do you have a favorite memory of serving in the house? Mm, well, <laughs> I don't have any bad memories there. Well, that's uh, good. <laughs> uh, I remember when they'd have the all night. <laughs> meetings and mm. it would go on and on and on until daylight would come mm. and that is a very tiresome thing to be there almost one day and then continuing on mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know if they still do that I, I guess they do but, uh, uh, and then there's times when uh, some group wanted to get a certain thing through uh, it didn't really matter whether it was a Democrat side or a Republican side. He wanted to get it. And then uh, <clears throat> maybe somebody wouldn't be in favor of it. So he said, well, no, I'm not going to vote for it. <laughs> well, then they'd keep it up and say, no, come on now, you're going to vote for this. <laughs> and sometimes it would be like after he'd really fallen asleep and <laughs> signed his name on it. <laughs> <laughs> So that I didn't think was too good, but uh, that's the way things work sometimes. What aspect of being a representative did you like the most? Well, I think I, I liked it all. Uh, first of all, I liked uh, uh, going from house to house and meeting a lot of people mm -hmm. and uh, telling them my stories. And, uh, and they were... Uh, kind enough to me to let me get in. And I did have a couple of things. Uh, I don't know whether you want to hear one. But, sure. But uh, <clears throat> when uh, they uh, were uh, having uh, different uh, people working would be entitled to certain items. So uh, out here they have uh, down in the ground, uh, where they would have uh, the in in the where they where they would have uh, the you know, either coal or stone or something like that. Mm -hmm. But said so you get down in there, and uh, <coughs> they wanted to have their. Uh, uh, thing in, uh, what do you call it, when the people, working people, go to a group. Like a union. A union, yeah. But they couldn't get it because uh, the, the deal was 
they're farmers, <laughs> so they're not entitled to it. So I, I knew uh, all these people are from right here, between here and uh, Elderton, uh, or the other way, uh, uh, Worthington. Okay. So, uh, so I said, well, why don't you come up over? So a bunch of them came, they were sitting in the back. <laughs> and so I was, gave the speech. <laughs> The only difference was that they were underground, <laughs> uh, so they should be entitled to the same thing. Yeah. So eventually that passed, and they got in, and I enjoyed that. Good. Was there anything you did not like about being a representative? Well, <laughs> I wouldn't say that uh, exactly. I uh, would have arguments with others, but uh, you no, know, it was. I, I enjoy these people, you yeah. um, know. Sometimes I enjoy them. <laughs> well, whenever you think about the Capitol and whenever you think about being gone for uh, 30 years, do you have any thoughts about what's going on in Harrisburg today? Well, <clears throat> not too much. I try to listen on the thing and I ask Mike how they're doing and mm -hmm. sometimes I can find him on the television, yeah. <laughs> but he's not saying anything. <laughs> but once in a while, he, he shows up on the mm -hmm. end of it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course, the uh, one uh, uh, the man who just died. Uh, Kaylee uh, Royervis? Yeah, yeah. And uh, he came in uh, at first, the first time I came in. So we were friends for all, all of those years, even mm -hmm. though I wasn't a member. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we felt so bad when, when he died in, in the place there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, let's see. When, uh, when, the, when I first uh, walked into the... Uh, Place. Uh, I happened to meet my old friend from the military, uh, Harvey McClure, <laughs> and uh, he just had one term, and it wasn't that he mm -hmm. lost out. He just uh, didn't want to come back from Erie every time. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, so he was uh, continued. He's still a good friend, but we were in the same uh, outfit in the in the army. Uh, when the, <laughs> that was an interesting. Thing. Uh, we were both not marked as uh, as uh, member as uh, attorneys, but just as members of the thing. So uh, <clears throat> when we came up, uh, he called me and said one time, "Would you like to go to a place uh, to learn about the military?" And I said, "Yeah, sure." <laughs> and uh, that's what we did. And uh, so eventually, in about the next few months, we both became attorneys. And then I was moved from uh, the uh, one outfit that I was with up to the uh, head of the uh, National Guard there. So yeah, we were friends for a long time. Um, is there anyone else you'd like to talk about? You, well, men you mentioned. Well, I guess there's a lot of them, but I... Uh -huh. yeah. Do you have someone that... Uh, well, I'm <laughs> saying there's... Uh, uh, Wilson was one of the persons down ben, here. Ben Wilson? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Burkett, who's oh, right. another one. And uh, uh, the Pat Crownover. And Crawford. Crawford. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Are those, were those all friends of yours? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. And, well, I th thought everybody was a friend. Yeah. yeah. Even if we weren't on the same side. So the house was like one big family. Yeah. And I think that was it when they had the two uh, hotels in town. Uh, whenever they were finished uh, doing, they'd go down to one of the two and uh, have a beer or something. And, then maybe they'd go from one to the other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was great. Well, then when they did away with the hotels and everybody had to find a 
different place. You weren't as as uh, you didn't know them as well as you would when mm -hmm. <laughs> you were sitting down over a beer. Mm -hmm. So you could drop your political differences, and everyone could just sit down and yeah. and talk about whatever. And it was uh, it was good. You felt good. You'd see the other guy, you'd wave to him. Hi, yeah. Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It must have been uh, some really nice times then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you remained active in politics since leaving the Pennsylvania House? Well, I go to vote. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I uh, attend the accounts, the, the, uh, part of the parties that they have, and different things. And mm -hmm. whatever I can do, I, I do. And there's times when somebody who's running wants to get me as... Uh, uh, some kind of a president of the thing. And so I, I'm glad to do that. So you've known the candidates probably from Armstrong County throughout the years too, I'm sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, do you think you have any advice for new members? What would you like to tell somebody that's just starting their career? <laughs> that's pretty hard to say. They, they get down there and they're going to represent uh, the people that uh, they know and I think that's the first thing that they want to do if they want to get this road straightened out they're not going to fool around with the people who mm -hmm. are not. That's mm -hmm. just an example. I'm mm -hmm. not necessarily talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. I, so know the people you're going to represent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And know their issues probably. Yeah and not everybody has uh, issues, but they, they want something that's going to make their life a lot better. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's good advice. Um, I see you have some notes. Is there anything else you'd like to, to talk about? Well, I think you did a wonderful job here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I just don't want to leave anything off. <clears throat> well, uh, oh, yeah, there is some, I've, Okay. told you about the military, but then the uh, automobile laws. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> this uh, last time that I was in there, I was on that uh, uh, company, not company, but uh, committee. committee that uh, changed the uh, matter for uh, better, it's especially on the thing where <clears throat> Somebody uh, had violated something. Well, then they might uh, say, "Well, you have to uh, not not uh, do any uh, driving for a month." It seemed to me to be sort of foolish that there. So uh, we did get together of uh, setting up the way it is now. That uh, I think it's something like six months, and if you're doing that all the time, then they're going to make it hard for you. But uh, I, I, th I felt pretty good on, on that. I was on, on that, that uh, for the people who are continuously doing it, mm -hmm. they're going to see to it that they, they, they do. But if you just do it one time and you have to you give it up for a, a month, it, it doesn't really help anybody. Mm -hmm. What would you say the hardest issues that perhaps you faced as a legislator were? Well, I don't know. Of course, I was uh, uh, not in the, uh, favor of uh, uh, people uh, taking their babies and not letting them come to the uh, place. So mm -hmm. I was in favor of uh, the child having uh, come to see the light of day and to, to try to make out on the thing. Mm -hmm. And I think for the most part, uh, the legislatures that I sat with uh, went along with that. Mm -hmm. And that was a, uh, both parties would have like the same thing. Some were in favor of it and some were against it. But mm -hmm. It wasn't a. Uh, uh, yeah. From one side or the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were you involved in any of the big budget battles? Um, 
No, uh, I was never on the budget mm -hmm. thing, and uh, uh, <laughs> I was just thinking about that time um, in the early '70s. Um, I think was when Pennsylvania started increasing taxes, and mm -hmm. and I wasn't sure if uh, you were opposed to that or for it. Well, nobody's in favor of taxes. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> but I didn't get into any um, arguments uh, with them. I wasn't uh, with, with those uh, uh, committees. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess when time came, I would uh, vote my way, but I didn't mm -hmm. get up and work on a thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I think your career certainly um, has been very interesting. You served, uh, as you said, in the military, and then your long, outstanding career as a lawyer, mm -hmm. and uh, your career with the Pennsylvania House. That, that's really wonderful. Thank you very much for your service. Well, thank you. And, uh, and I still was with uh, Indiana University there. Yes, and public service as well. Yeah. So um, I'm sure lots of uh, students will be very thankful for all that you've done. Well, I have to thank you for coming all this distance. Well, we certainly enjoyed you having us. It takes at least four hours to It does, <laughs> especially if you get lost. <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. McHugh. It was What's a pleasure. Your heart? I, I'm so glad that you came. I'm so glad that we're here. You thank have you. these nice fellows here. I know, I do. I'm very lucky. <laughs>